In this video, we are going to get really good at figuring out the oxidation numbers for elements in a chemical compound because we are going to do a ton of examples. We're going to start out with some examples that are pretty basic and straightforward, and then we will go step by step into problems that are a little bit more challenging. Okay, so these are the rules that we'll use to figure out oxidation number, and I got a periodic table here to help us out. Our first example is CaO. Let's take a look at the individual elements. So Ca, calcium, is here on the periodic table. It's in group 2A, and we have a rule for group 2A. Elements in group 2A are always plus 2. So that's calcium's oxidation number. Now we have O, oxygen. There's a rule for oxygen. It usually has an oxidation number of minus 2. It's minus 1 in peroxide. Definitely not in peroxide here. So its oxidation number is minus 2 for oxygen. Now check this out, there's a third rule, and that's this one right here. That the sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should equal zero. CaO here is definitely a neutral compound, there's not a charge after it, and you'll see that if we add these oxidation numbers together, plus two, minus two, we get zero. So the oxidation numbers sum to zero for this neutral compound. CuI. So there's not a rule for Cu which means that we're going to have to figure out its oxidation number by using what we do know. And that's going to be what we know about iodine here, I. I is a halogen. It's in this group here, 7A, and there's a rule for the halogens. The halogens usually have an oxidation number of minus 1, though they're positive with oxygen. We definitely aren't with oxygen here, so the oxidation number is going to be minus 1. To figure out the oxidation number of Cu, we're going to use this rule that the sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should equal zero. This is definitely a neutral compound. So whatever the oxidation number on Cu is, when added with minus one, should give us zero. And that is going to be plus one. Minus one is zero, so the oxidation number on Cu is plus one. Fe, Br3. So there's not a rule here for Fe which means that we've got to figure out its oxidation number using what we do know. We'll focus in here on Br. Br is one of the halogens in group 7A. There's a rule for this, that the halogens are usually minus one, except with oxygen. Now here, we have three Brs, which means that we have to multiply this oxidation number times three to account for these three atoms here, which means that our total number for Br is going to be minus three. Now, to figure out the oxidation number of Fe, we'll use this rule that the sum of oxidation numbers for a neutral compound should be zero. That means that the oxidation number on Fe on iron should be plus three, because we've got plus three minus three equals zero. So the oxidation number for Fe, plus three. Oxidation number for Br, minus one. NH4Cl. We don't have a specific rule for nitrogen, N here, but we do know stuff about hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen is plus one with nonmetals and it's minus one with metals. It's combined here with nitrogen and chlorine, which are both nonmetals, so its oxidation number in this situation is going to be plus one. Cl, chlorine over here, is one of the halogens, usually minus one, positive with oxygen. It's not with oxygen, so it's safe to call its oxidation number minus one. Now we gotta do a little bit of multiplication. We got the plus one oxidation number on hydrogen, but we have four of them. So we gotta do plus one times four, which is gonna give us a total oxidation number of plus four. Okay, now that minus one plus whatever nitrogen is should give us zero because this is a neutral compound. So what is nitrogen's oxidation number going to be? It's going to be minus three. Minus three plus four minus one gives us zero. So that's how we figure out the oxidation number for nitrogen. CO3, two minus, this thing is a polyatomic ion that has a charge of two minus. We gotta take this into account when we do the calculations later. So, carbon, C, there's not a rule for that, but we do know some stuff about oxygen. Oxygen is usually minus two, except in peroxides. 
So that's what I'll put as its oxidation number here. Now we have three oxygens in this compound. So I'll do minus two times three, which gives us minus six here. Now, the oxidation number on carbon plus the oxidation number on oxygen should give us minus two, which is the ion charge for this polyatomic ion. So what then is going to be the charge on carbon here? It's going to be plus four. Plus four minus six equals minus two plus four on carbon. Ba2 plus. Ba2 plus here is a monatomic ion. It's an ion that's made of only one atom, which means that its oxidation number is the same as its ion charge. So Ba2 plus has an oxidation number of plus two. H2, P2, O7, two minus. What do we know about the elements in this compound? Well, hydrogen here has an oxidation number of plus one with nonmetals and minus one with metals. Phosphorus and oxygen are nonmetals, so hydrogen is gonna have an oxidation number of plus one. Now phosphorus here. There's not a specific rule for phosphorus, so we'll have to figure out its oxidation number later using what we do know. Oxygen usually has an oxidation number of minus two. Now let's do some multiplication. We have two hydrogens, so we're gonna do plus one times two to give us a total number of plus two from the hydrogen. We have seven oxygens, so we're gonna do minus two times seven to get minus 14 for the oxygen. Now, to figure out the oxidation number of phosphorus, we will add all of these together, and we should get two minus, minus two, because that is the ion charge for this polyatomic ion. I'm getting that number from right here. So, what are we gonna add together with these two numbers to get minus two? It's going to be plus 10. I got plus two plus 10 gives us plus 12, minus 14 gives us minus two. So, the total oxidation number for phosphorus is plus 10, but there are two phosphoruses. So I've gotta take this plus 10 and divide it by two, because this oxidation number of 10 is divided between the two different phosphorus atoms, which means that the oxidation number for each one is going to be plus five. Plus one, plus five, minus two. O3. O3 here is what I'd call an element by itself. It's just oxygen. It's not combined with any other elements, which means that its oxidation number is going to be zero. K, Cl, O3. We'll start with K. K is potassium. It's right here on the periodic table. It's in this column, which is group 1A. Members of group 1A always have an oxidation number of plus one. Now we've got Cl. Cl is one of the halogens here in group 7A. The halogens are usually minus one, although they're positive with oxygen. Here, Cl is with oxygen. So we know it's gonna have a positive oxidation number. We don't know exactly what it's gonna be, so we'll have to figure it out using the other information. Now we'll move on to oxygen. Oxygen is usually minus two, so I can write that in right here. Okay, now do a little multiplication. We have three oxygen atoms, so we're gonna do minus two times three to give us minus six, that's a total number for oxygen. We got plus one from the potassium, and this plus this plus whatever Cl's oxidation number is should give us zero because this is a neutral compound without a charge. So we're gonna have plus one plus five to get plus six minus six equals zero. So the oxidation number for chlorine here will be plus five. This is one of the unique examples where a halogen doesn't have an oxidation number of minus one because it's paired up with oxygen. Instead, its oxidation number is positive. H2O2. Okay, H, hydrogen, has an oxidation number of plus one with nonmetals. Oxygen is a nonmetal. Oxygen here is usually minus two, but 
minus one in peroxide. Look at this, it's hydrogen peroxide, which means that its oxidation number is a rare minus one in this situation. Now just check this out for the multiplication really quickly. There are two oxygens and each of them is minus one, so we get a total of minus two here. There are two hydrogens, each one of them is plus two, so we get plus two for the hydrogen, plus two minus two equals zero. Just remember that oxygen is minus one, not minus two, when it's in peroxide. NaBH4. Okay, Na sodium right here in group 1A. Group 1A elements are always plus one. B, boron, we don't have a rule for that, we'll figure it out. H here, hydrogen, plus one with nonmetals, minus one with metals. Sodium here is a metal. So that means that hydrogen is gonna have an oxidation number of minus one because it's with a metal. Now we'll do the multiplication. Minus one times four gives us minus four plus one from the sodium. What is boron's oxidation number gonna be? Whatever it is, it's gonna add with the other numbers to make zero because this is a neutral compound without a charge. So boron's oxidation number is going to be plus three, plus one, plus three, minus four equals zero, an oxidation number of plus three for boron here. BrF5. Bromine and fluorine are both halogens. The halogens usually have an oxidation number of minus one, but both of these elements can have negative oxidation numbers because this is a neutral compound, and so the total oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. That's not gonna happen if they're both negative. So how are we gonna deal with this? Well, we'll focus in on this rule here, and that's that fluorine is always minus one. Notice that for the halogens here, I said they are usually minus one, but they don't always have to be minus one. So fluorine here we know is always minus one. Minus one here, we have five fluorines, so we'll multiply this by five to get minus five total. Now, the oxidation number on Br has to be plus five, because plus five minus five is going to give us zero, and this is a neutral compound. So that means that in this case, the oxidation number on Br is plus five, so that it can balance out the minus one oxidation number on fluorine. This is one of the rare cases where two halogens bond together. Fluorine will always be negative, it will always have this oxidation number of minus one, and the other halogen will end up having a positive oxidation number. Here's our last example, Ca, and then we have parentheses, ClO42. Okay, let's figure out these oxidation numbers. Ca, calcium, is in group 2A, so it's gonna have an oxidation number of plus two. Cl is a halogen, it's usually gonna be minus one, but it's gonna be positive with oxygen. There's oxygen here, so we've gotta figure out Cl's oxidation number later. Oxygen here is usually minus two, so I'm gonna write that in. Now it's time for some multiplication, but we've gotta be particularly careful because there are these parentheses and the number outside the parentheses. The first thing let's do is do the multiplication within the parentheses, okay? We have oxygen here with an oxidation number of minus two, and we have four of them. So I will do minus two times four gives me minus eight total. But now we have these parentheses and we have this number two outside of the parentheses. That means that we have two of this whole thing. The math that I did here was only the oxidation numbers for one of these because there are four oxygens for each, but I have two of them. So I gotta take this number here, minus eight, multiply that by two to get minus 16. All right, so I've got plus two from the calcium. I got minus 16 from the oxygen. That should add up with the oxidation number from chlorine to give me zero. So plus 14 is gonna be the oxidation number on chlorine plus two, plus 14, minus 16 equals zero. But remember that we have two of these here because of this number outside the parentheses. So we've gotta take this 14 and divide it by two 
to get an oxidation number of plus 7 for the chlorine. Remember, this is all because of these parentheses that mean we have two of this whole chunk. Okay, so plus 2 for calcium, plus 7 for chlorine, and minus 2 for oxygen. So, I bet you've gotten really comfortable with figuring out these oxidation numbers. After watching this video, I hope that you are all set.